Hi guys, we're in the last week of the masterclass, the fourth week, and we will be looking at movement and then also shooting people when it comes to street photography. So one of my favorite things when it comes to street photography is really getting people involved, also having movement in pictures. Again, it's just that beautiful thing of having contrast, of the still building behind someone rushing, then there'll be people, you know, pausing to take things in in a picture, and then there's someone rushing right next to them. It's just feels like you've kind of caused a scene and there's just so many different things going on and that's when you kind of realize like wow we all live different lives but here we are in the same place and I've captured a moment which kind of shows you know all the different there could be different generations in a photo you know when you're going past or you know animals and people or that interaction between people kind of just seeing each other and that love between them or someone's excitement and the amusement of being in a new city and that's what I love about street photography and just getting people involved and just looking out for those few things around you so whether it's you're looking at a cafe there's people sitting and enjoying themselves stuff like that people just kind of sitting taking in the weather it's something that I really like to look for I like to try and sometimes look for themes so one of my themes I sometimes try and shoot when I'm doing street photography and involving people is things like relationships so whether it's a relationship between siblings that have come here or if you know it again Paris as I've said is the city of love um, it's people you can see there are couples that are very excited to be here and it's just very easy to kind of see those moments and just document them which is a great way of being able to come back and be like I have a story to tell about these people I saw and it just makes it click all together. So I'm just going to be covering a few things during this video. For example, if you are feeling very timid about shooting people, building your confidence is something I want to help you guys work on because I was someone that was very anxious. Even when it came to just talking to people, camera removed, I really struggled with that growing up. But through photography and shooting people, I talk a lot. I'm not afraid to meet new people now or disturb people for a picture. But there are also things that you can do to build yourself up if you don't really want to dive in and you're not at the stage yet where you feel like going up to people. Because sometimes I have those days as well where I feel overly anxious. But there can be simple things such as shooting from behind people, not exactly taking face up forward shots of people. You know, there can be a library or a bookstore and people are looking at books and you know they're just going through them. That could be a great shot where you're involving someone without one, them feeling awkward and to yourself feeling awkward and the chances of them, you know, feeling like, no, I don't want that picture out there because you can't see their face. So it's not obvious to spot who they are, things like that. Also, just like when people are moving really fast, you can set your camera up in a certain way. For example, uh, we usually shoot where it's like a one shot, but you can change the settings of your camera to do multiple shots. So you can have that movement going through and that blur and that contrast. So you can have a bit of static going on, but then you also have that movement, which makes it nice and then also keeps people's identities kind of hidden. Another way you can kind of, you know, avoid these issues of being worried about people is by making the most of your lens. That's why I love my 24 to 70 because I can do things such as zooming out if I feel like it has too much detail of people and I'm worried about, you know, someone being like, oh, you've got me on camera. As well as zooming in, if you're across the street and you see people across that you really would love to take a picture of or it's a beautiful moment that you want to capture, then you can do that as well, which is great. So now I'm going to take you guys along with me and show you guys how I usually shoot street style and as well talk you through the process as if you are someone that's been following me for a while you would have seen my pictures and I don't really show you guys while I'm actively doing it so this will be a great way to kind of share my tips and tricks while I'm showing you guys what I do and then also what I see. So let's go. So when it comes to street photography, what I like to do is I like to kind of just wander around, let it all happen naturally. So what I'm going to do now is just go for a walk, see what we come across, who we come across and take some shots along the way. So one thing about me when I'm shooting street photography is I love a fruit store. I feel like every time I travel, I always just have to have one. It's like a bingo card of some sort that I like to kind of tick off. Um, so. Although there are cars at the moment, when there is movement and when the street is free, I'm going to try and get a picture. I'll see how it works from over here. If the zoom isn't enough, then I just will cross the street to get that perfect shot. So again, with this shot, I'm just having to play around with my ISO because it is quite bright. I'm just bringing it down minus. And again, the great thing about taking a picture of a place like a fruit store is there are people walking past. So that's when that movement comes in and it goes from being just static to having a lot of movement, a lot of people involved, and it just really adds character to a picture. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and cross the road and get a bit closer and see if I can get more detailed shots of the actual fruits on display.
So with this shot, I've zoomed in all the way using my 24 to 70 lens, and I'm just trying to get all the details so you can see all the different fruits and how fresh they look, all the different colors. What I love about a shot like this is it's just very vibrant. There's so many different colors. So if you are someone that doesn't like to edit, then this picture will do the work for you. Because as I mentioned, Canon is quite bright. It does a lot of the work. It's very easy to use. And then what you can do is slowly again, start to come out and frame the picture, show more of the shop, show more detail and give people more of an introspect to what the actual shop is because if you zoom in it could be any fruit store so now I kind of want to be like oh this is where I, exactly where I am and give more context. So with a shot like this where there's people walking past you can change the settings on your camera so usually I have mine set where it's just I'm taking the one shot but what you can do is change it to take multiple shots so that as people walk past and you can stay and focus on the fruit then have that blurriness and of the body and the movement going through which is a great way to do that so I'm just going to change and play around with that to have it on high speed continuous just because people walk quite fast when they see you have a camera so it's nice to kind of just have that change in photo from it just being just the fruits to having people's body and movement involved and just painting a picture of everyday life taking it to another level and just adding more to a photo. So when you take a lot of pictures on high speed continuous, if you're someone that's very you know, advanced or if you've had a play around before, then you know that you can take those pictures and make it into a looped GIF of some sort. So it's just you know every shot from the beginning to the end, showing people walking past. If you want to take your pictures and do something else with them and add to them again, that's another fun way to play around with them. So what I'm going to try and do now is show you guys a great example of again taking pictures of people if you're worried about them, how taking pictures from the back can be a great way to take pictures of people and have them in a photo without it one being too posed and then two worrying about you know their safety and whether they would consent to having a picture taken of them. It just hides their identity but again can add so much to a picture. Um, there's like a cute older couple ahead of me. Their backs are towards me, so again, it's not disturbing them, the camera's not in their face. But that's just a theme I noticed and I was able to kind of pick up on to get a shot and make the most of, and then using the scenery in the background as well as having the couple there, but they're anonymous. It makes for a great, easy shot. So there's a beautiful, massive green door right across me, and again, I think I would like to kind of frame my picture around this, but have people in it. So as people are walking past again have my camera on high speed continuous and just have that movement and people walking past in the pictures to make just an easy shot again that's one way I kind of like to have people involved and then also have spaces that I really like involved so you can frame it around the place and just wait for the right people to walk past and get that shot cool so I'll just have a look at those I'm hoping one of these kind of worked out but again, yeah, so having it on high speed continuous allowed me to just kind of have some photos where I've got a few people. So for example, this lady and her dog. And then you have that bit of commotion here where it's like a few people walking through. But the door is always still focused, which I think is great. And it's a fun way of playing around with street photography, seeing what you like. Some people like to have everything in focus. Some people like a bit of commotion. It's just a nice way to have a change in the background of your photos. So I really like this storefront here, it's really cute, you've got all the, I think it's cheeses, I don't have my glasses on so I can't see very well. So what I would like to do is, you know, take a picture here and there are people that have just conveniently stopped in front to have a conversation and that's another thing I love, just, you know, having people that are talking where it's natural, it's normal and just having that framed in a picture because it's great being on holiday but sometimes you want to move away from those really post photos um, and just having like a real life moment where okay I'm in Paris there are other people that are here that actually live here I want to involve them in the pictures it doesn't have to be the Eiffel Tower it could be moments like this which are really nice and also tell a different story so for this picture I'm going to start with zooming all the way out just so I can make the most and working around that so Again, I've still got my camera on high speed continuous and as people move in, I can just work on different things. And again, zoom out as you see opportunities. So now there's a bike involved, there's more movement and there's a group of people, a group of people about to walk past. And yeah, there should be a nice range to pick from here. 
I'll just give my camera a minute to adjust. So again, there's loads going on in this picture. I have so many different people talking. I love having different people, different ages, you know, just people from different walks of life. You can never tell someone may be a tourist, someone may live here. There's just so much variety in a picture. And yeah, that's what I meant by having those pictures where it almost looks like you're watching a movie and it's just been paused. It's just a great way of having that street photography element where it's just a bit different, something new, something exciting, and it just plays about with movement, people, and then that also static element of street photography sometimes. And so one thing I do love about Paris, and not even just Paris actually, street photography full stop, is around summertime when doors are open, windows are open, that's something you can make use of, of taking pictures of people and again, not disturbing their peace. So there's a restaurant here and I can see through the door as the door's clear where I can get a nice shot of someone from the back without disturbing them, without it being in their face. And it's just another way to kind of, you know, make use of how things are structured, the architecture of things and just, yeah, play around with that. That's another way I like to make the most of things. So for this one, I'm going to take my camera off high speed continuous and move it to single shooting just because I don't want to waste the shots and I don't need it because there's no, there's not enough movement um, to worry about all of that in a picture. And as you can see, it's just the back of someone and it's just a simple, different way to play around with it, you know, and have someone involved without them being too involved and making it very simple and easy. Another way to make the most of people and actually shooting them and having them involved is through those that may be busking. It's a great way to show culture of the city that you're in, show off the talents of the people performing and also, you know, just dropping in a donation and just making the most and saying thank you and being able to document that. That's a great way of having street photography and just having that involved. So I found someone here and I'm going to try and get a quick shot. So with this picture I've zoomed in all the way just to make the most of being close and getting those extra details. Usually sometimes when someone's busking they may have their name there or their Instagram name, handle and it's just nice to involve that as well in the picture so that if people are intrigued they can go and find that person so you know you don't feel like you're just using that person for a moment you are actually I guess in a sense sharing that person's you know music journey and who knows it could lead to something especially if your picture does end up going viral it's just a nice way to kind of really involve the person who you're taking a picture on but in this instance there is no handle um, but again it's just nice to really zoom in, getting all the extra details you can see from the instrument they're playing to, you know, what they're wearing. It's really fun to kind of really involve them and just make the picture all about them and that moment. So one other way, again, where you can take pictures of people, kind of have them aware but not really disturbed is making the most of coffee shops and restaurants where people are sitting outside because that is the trend and that is what people do, especially when the weather is so nice. So that's what I like to do. I kind of like to make the most of being able to zoom in and then taking that picture from across the street where it's not literally just standing at the restaurant like in their face and then it's like, mm, we'd like you to move. It can be a, a lot, you know? So what I like to do is stand across from a street and just zoom in as much as I can and that's why it's again great to have zoom lens or fixed lens where it really is zoomed in, um, which is why moments like this, is like I'd rather have my 50 in my backpack and just have it for a different moment and just make the most of my 24 to 70. And again, there's just people crossing in the street, so it just adds more to the picture. Especially when people are on bikes and using things like that, I like to try and get a shot of them going through as well, because that's just another way, again, to add movement to a shot without having to do too much, making the most of the people around you and just using that movement without having to create too much yourself. Great way to do it when people are riding by on bikes, motorbikes. Again, just adds a lot more character. So I've just taken my first portrait of someone while doing my street photography. It seems like a really hard thing and I feel like a lot of us psych ourselves up. It's all in the head where we're just like, if I ask this person for a picture, they're going to say no. And that's how I felt as well when I started out, you know, first taking pictures of people. And actually it's a really lovely process where when that person says yes, and most of the time, I kid you not, 90% of the time, they are really friendly about it. As long as, you know, you've kind of asked them first before, just creating that rapport creating that friendship, you know, where you just kind of talk to them. You also get to know them, which is lovely. Um, for example, that lady there, I was just kind of talking to her, asking her about whether she could speak English, and between 
the little French I speak and the little English she speaks, we were able to kind of talk, get a conversation going. And then I asked her after buying something whether she wouldn't mind if I took a picture of the store and then as well take a picture of her. And she said yes. And it was that simple. I was able to kind of, you know, walk away now with a picture of someone and a little story that I'm able to tell because it literally I asked one question and it went well. And even if it didn't, you just keep going. But someone will say yes and don't take it personally because it's a thing where some people just don't like having their photo taken. I'm the same sometimes. Some days I feel like having photos taken of me. Some days I'm just like, I'm not feeling it. Um, it's just, it's really not as bad as you think. You just need to push yourself and it feels really good when you push yourself and it actually works out. It's just like, oh, I want to do this again. So we are another spot that is really popular on Instagram, all over on blogs and that people really like to come and visit and it's one of those ones where I would love to have people involved with this one but at the moment it's not exactly, you know, filled with life. So this is why I like to call one of those moments where it's like a shoot and wait shot. So I like to kind of find a location and then wait until I feel like the perfect moment comes or the perfect people, perfect people I should say perfect people pass by and you know it just creates that moment as the movement as a bit of like a dynamicness if that's even a word I may have made that up um, to a photo so that's what I like to do so I'm just going to show you you know how I wait and get that picture and how I get the movement going and those shots so usually with moments like this is either I'll turn my camera to low speed continuous or high speed continuous depending on how much and how much focus I want in that picture and how many people are passing by I remember one of those from like, I suggest playing around with both and seeing which you like, or maybe you're just a one-shot person where you want everything in focus. That can be me some days, but some days I do like to mix it up just to see how I feel. Cool. So that really wasn't the shot I wanted. In that moment, there was quite a few people passing through and it was just way too much focus away from the person that I wanted to shoot, which was the one guy sitting at the cafe already, just, you know, peacefully sitting there. So this is what I mean by when I say that there can be too much going on and you just have to sit and wait for an opportunity to come by where it's literally, the street is quiet, it's perfect, it's just that person and then there isn't too much chaos because sometimes it can be nice to have a lot of people moving and a lot of movement but sometimes it's nice to have street photography where it's just a single person, it's still, there's nothing going on, it's paused, everything is just still, the background is in focus, the person is in focus and it's just simple. Cool. So I think I've got the shot now. Um, it can be one of those things where people, you know, go up to a restaurant, they're interested and they start to look at the menu. But I've waited and those people have left and it was empty and I was perfectly able to get that shot of the person just sat there enjoying their time without them being, you know, overshadowed or too much going on. So lastly, I just want to remind you guys that if you've been tuning in, you can apply all the things we've kind of gone through over the last few weeks when you're shooting people as well or it comes to things like symmetry or it comes to looking for things like themes for example I mentioned people wearing two hats you can look around for those kind of things as well as using like rule of thirds it can be applied to people it can be applied all over so don't feel like you have to limit yourself to one thing if I've said it in one part everything applies feel free to mix it up feel free to do your own thing feel free to kind of take what I've said with a pinch and then adapt it into your own kind of thing that's the great thing about photography, you can do what you want, you can explore, there's no one way of doing things, you can do what makes you feel comfortable and you can focus on the things that you also feel comfortable shooting as well. So yeah, I hope this has helped. So guys, we have made it to the end of the masterclass. I hope you guys have enjoyed, I hope you guys have learned. I just want to leave you with a few things that I would really love to give as advice or a few tips to take forward as we end this. So the first piece of advice I would love to give is to not be afraid to go up to people, to try a different building, to try something out of your comfort zone, to also go back to the basics and build yourself up. Just don't be afraid to do anything. Like literally, it's a process. You're not always going to be amazing when you first get going. I have those days where it's a bit of a slow burner and by the end I feel amazing. Or you have those days where it goes great from the start but don't count yourself out, don't give up because there could be a shot around every corner. That's the thing with street photography, you never know who you're going to run into, what you're going to see and that's the beauty of it. The second piece of advice I would give is to practice. 
the saying is practice makes perfect, but practice also just kind of gets you used to things. It gets you out of your comfort zone. It gets you learning what you like, what you dislike, and eventually you kind of get into a mojo where it's just like, a, okay, I know what I'm looking out for, and it won't be a thing where you spend ages at places and you're like, oh, I hate the shot by the end of it. You'll know already in terms of weather conditions, in terms of your camera, whether you're like, no, this isn't for me and it just will save you time. So just keep practicing, keep trying different things, you never know. And my last piece of advice would be to play around with what you have, don't feel limited, because I started out with my 700D from Canon and you know, I thought this is an, a great camera in terms of spec, if you look at all the other ones. But again, that got me so many opportunities and I really pushed myself with that camera. I traveled with it, I shot fashion with it, I tried nature with it, I tried so many different things and I just found that when it came to taking portraits and doing street photography, I really loved the camera and I really loved what it could do for me. As well as also adding in my 24 to 70 lens, that just changed the game for me completely because I felt very limited with my 50, but 50 is a great place to start. Um, so just try and play around with what you have and also don't feel the need to kind of stretch yourself or put yourself out when it comes to money to buy the latest thing because it can be a lot and you know just make do with what you have a lot of the greats started off with smaller things and they worked their way up and some of them still will tell you that one of their first cameras is their favorite that they have ever shot with so don't feel the need to push further than that so one career tip i would give is to be authentic be yourself it's something that i really struggled with i kind of came into the game when i started and thought i had to do what everyone else was doing you know, kind of portray myself in a certain way to be liked, to, you know, get those opportunities coming through the door. Um, and that wasn't the case. I felt very overwhelmed. I felt like I couldn't be myself on my platforms. And when I was being most true to myself and sharing the things that I really cared about, that was actually when I was attracting the jobs that I was really most excited about. I was working with the companies that I really loved. And it six years into me, you know, freelancing and it was last November where I realized that actually I want to go back to being my authentic self. I want to start all over, scrap everything, take those opportunities away and build myself back up again and be like, hi, this is me, this is Yossi, this is the real me. And it just feels so much better personally for me. Um, I just feel like I can be myself. I, When people go on my website and go on my page, they know who I am, they know who they're dealing with, they know who they're potentially hiring, you know, so it's not a case where when I get to a shoot and it's just like, a, oh, you aren't who I thought you were or you're art seems different from who you are, it feels a bit detached. I feel like when you see me and see my work now, you know who I am and what my work represents and it's just a great feeling to have that. So I really do recommend trying to stay true to you because it can be very easy to lose yourself and I do not blame anyone. I have done it myself. I hold my hand up and say that I've been there but it just, in the long run, you will kind of wish that you kept that one thing that makes you special because again with photography it can be very easy to come off and seem very the same so that's the thing that sets you aside that's what makes you different from someone else whether you guys shoot with the same gear you're different people you've come from different places and you know it's different paths that have got you to that same place and if you've taken anything from this we'd love to see your photos using the hashtag Wex How To. they'll be posting their favorite ones the best ones and i also would love to see if anyone took anything from this and you know see how you guys are growing what you've taken what you're learning what you're applying it's just great to see you know how people are doing and what they found most useful because sometimes it feels when you're shooting you're not really doing anything specifically but actually talking to you guys and going through this it's been great for me as well because I'm like wow actually I do a lot more than I think I do I'm not just pressing buttons I actually am so I'm so let me think about that word I'm subconsciously um, doing things in the background without really thinking about it and it's great to actually realize these things so thank you guys also for helping me realize that actually I'm doing quite a lot when I'm shooting there's more to it than just yeah throwing on my phone editing and seeing an opportunity there's a lot that's gone through that process of getting that image at the end and that result. So you guys can find me online if you're interested. Again, I'm Yossi Akinsanya and you can find me on Instagram at Yossi Akin or you can find me on TikTok at Yossi Akinsanya and this has been great. And lastly, thank you so much to Canon and Wex Photo and Video for this opportunity. It has been amazing and a massive, massive special thank you to you guys that have tuned in. I hope you've taken from this. I hope you've learned something and see you guys soon.